welcome back to the Oracle Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. In this episode, I will give you an overview of the security features available in MAF. As you will see, security is not only about usernames and passwords. A successful implementation requires proper planning, since there are server-side components involved in addition to the MAF application itself. Now, let's get started. Security is a very wide topic, one that could sustain a whole series of recordings by itself. Here, we will look at it in the perspective of a developer or software architect. There are three concepts you should be aware of in order to understand the rest of this episode. The first one is authentication. Authentication is simply to confirm the identity of the user typically by validating a username and a password. In other words, when you authenticate, you prove that you are who you say you are. The second concept is authorization. Authorization simply means that the application confirms that you have the privileges and role membership required to take a specific action. In plain English, it means that you are permitted to do what you try to do. Most of the time, authorization is performed after the user authenticated successfully. Checking the roles and privileges of a stranger doesn't make much sense after all. Together, authentication and authorization are parts of access control, which is the process by which an application accepts or rejects an access request. Other concepts we don't discuss here are confidentiality, privacy, integrity, and non-repudiation. But be reassured that MAF can implement all of those. Now, let's focus on authentication. Oracle MAF supports several authentication technologies. Each one is suited for different use cases. Here, my goal is simply to give a high-level overview of each one. HTTP BASIC is found nearly everywhere, as it is supported not only by Java application servers such as Oracle WebLogic Server, but also by plain HTTP servers such as Apache or Microsoft IIS. This guarantees you can authenticate against a wide variety of backends, even older or more exotic ones. Federated SSO, also called WebSSO, provides a mechanism for companies to share identity information across their respective security domains. The user does not need to supply login credentials to access remote applications provided by your partners if he already logged in locally and you configured identity federation between you and your partner. This eliminates the need to remember and manage multiple logins and passwords. Users, obviously, still need accounts at the sites so that the accounts can be linked. If you use Oracle's identity management solutions, Oracle Access Manager provides everything you need in order to deploy identity federation. However, math applications can connect to a variety of federated SSO backends, not just OAM. Mobile and Social refers to Oracle Access Manager Mobile and Social, OAMMS, a member of the Identity Management product family. OAMMS has advanced features, such as support for several types of security tokens and the capacity to integrate with internet-based identity providers, such as Facebook, Google, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Yahoo. Also, if you have deployed Oracle Adaptive Access Manager, OIMMS can use it to uniquely identify connecting mobile devices, this is called device fingerprinting, and even offer multi-step authentication support to applications. Finally, MAF supports OHOT, which is an open standard for authorization but enables authentication as well. Typically, it is used as a way to enable users to log into third-party websites using their Google, Facebook, or Twitter accounts, for example. 
to authenticate the users of your math application using a specific technology, you simply have to create a connection and configure it. I will show how to perform this in another episode. It is also possible to define a placeholder connection for which values will be specified at runtime. Most of the time, math applications will perform authentication against live remote servers. In fact, this is mandatory for federated SSO and OAuth connections. However, if you use HTTP Basic or mobile and social authentication, you have the opportunity to authenticate even offline. You can choose to always perform authentication against credentials cached on the device. This is called local authentication and requires the user to authenticate at least once on a remote server. You can also configure authentication to be performed remotely when there is a network connection available and locally otherwise. This is called hybrid authentication and also requires the user to authenticate remotely at least once. Local and hybrid authentication can only be selected in the case of HTTP basic or mobile and social connections. At this point, you know what authentication technologies you can use and how you can change the runtime behavior of your application. Let's now have a look at the authentication lifecycle, which is always the same regardless of the authentication technology selected. First of all is the login page. Authentication is configured on a per feature basis. This means the application will not display a login page until the user activates a secured feature. On the other hand, if the default feature for an application is secured, the login page will be displayed right away. If the user authenticates successfully, the credentials will be cached in memory in the case of a remote connection and in a local key store for local and hybrid connections. The credentials will be eventually cleared if the threshold for the idle timeout or the session timeout is exceeded. Once the user is logged in, math applications typically will make at least a few web service calls. Some of those web services may require authentication. What happens in that case then? It depends on the style of the web service. For SOAP services, MAF will inject the credentials in either the SOAP or HTTP header. For REST services, the credentials will be stored in a cookie or on the HTTP header in the remote if the remote server denies cookies. Finally, at some point, the credentials will be invalidated. This will happen if the idle timeout for the feature is reached or through an explicit API call triggered by a logout button, for example. In addition, current credentials will be invalidated if the process for the application exits. Do not confuse that with switching to another application or returning to the home screen. Usually, iOS and Android keep applications that are not displayed in memory, although there is no guarantee they won't be killed at some point if the OS needs the resources they hold. When invalidation happens, users won't necessarily have to retype their username and password. What will happen depends on the auto-login settings for the authentication collection. The auto-login settings are located in a dedicated tab which is available for all possible connection types. They offer lots of flexibility. You can give users the possibility to ask the application to remember their username, their password, or both. Those choices will be offered through checkboxes displayed on the login page. If credentials are invalidated, the math application will show the login page and will fill the appropriate fields. The user will then have to click on the login button to start the authentication process. If the application is not managing critical data and processes, you can also give users the possibility to stay logged in. Basically, this means math caches the user credentials and then replaces them to the authentication server during subsequent authentications. In this mode, users will not see the login page when they start the application, 
unless they have changed their password server side, for example. You can make each of the options I discussed the default choice for your application. Up to now, we have discussed authentication a lot. Let's now focus on authorization. In math applications, authorization can take both the roles and privileges of a user into account. To obtain those roles and privileges, the application must interact with something we call the Access Control Service. What is it? Essentially, it is a REST web service whose signature has been set by Oracle. When you configure authorization for your application, you simply provide the URL to that service. Please note, you must implement the Access Control Service yourself. The official math documentation contains all the relevant information in order to do so. There are three distinct levels of authorization in math applications. You can use any combination of them. First, you can control access at the feature level. This is achieved by adding constraints to the feature that check for specific roles or privileges. Second, you can make authorization checks in task flows. Through expression language or Java code, you can check if the user is authenticated, if he belongs to a role or if he holds a privilege. You can also obtain the username if the user is authenticated. Third, you can assign values to the properties of AMX components through expression language. For example, a button could be disabled if the user doesn't hold the privilege required to use it. As you can see, authorization can be as coarse or as fine as you need it. Authentication and authorization are important parts of security. However, they are not enough to guarantee the protection and integrity of your data. For that, you need encryption. There are three different levels of encryption in math applications. First, credentials are encrypted. If you enable remote or hybrid authentication, the credentials are not kept in clear text. The same happens if autologin is enabled and the user chooses to take advantage of it. If your application uses the SQLite local database, you can encrypt the database file. That way, unauthorized users won't be able to access sensitive data even if they have physical control over the device. However, database encryption is useless if your application doesn't require authentication or if you enable autologin and need to guarantee data confidentiality. Finally, Math applications use SSL to encrypt communications with remote servers. In fact, Oracle recommends you communicate with secured web services over SSL only. If you do otherwise, you will transmit authentication credentials in clear over the network, which obviously could lead to severe security breaches. The security features in math are comprehensive. You can authenticate using a variety of technologies and implement authorization as you see fit. In addition, math applications can even remember security credentials, which enables users to skip the login page for applications not handling sensitive data. On the other hand, the various levels of encryption available in math will help you help preserve the integrity and confidentiality of your data even if a device is lost or stolen. That's all for now. I'm Frédéric Desbiens. Thank you for watching.